episode of the Stead at Home Mom and I want to talk about the Harvard Magazine article that is just blowing up in the homeschool feeds and I'm sure you have already seen this. If not, then I will, um, I'll have it posted um, in the description for you. So the title of the article is The Risk of Homeschooling and what makes it interesting is coming out of Harvard Magazine is that Harvard is planning on doing a, um, or was at least, I don't know how things are going right now, but a summer conference about um, homeschooling where basically all these panelists are people that are not fans of homeschooling um, to begin with. In fact, some of them are borderline hostile to um, homeschoolers. And these groups make up of different advocates and lawyers and people that have seen or experienced the worst of the worst homeschooling that we all know make up the tiniest minority of um, bad situations um, and definitely do not represent the homeschooling movement as a whole. And we know that we should never see a movement for the minority of people that might be affiliated, we should always look at what is the whole and the um, and the majority because we can say the same about um, the public school institution. There's a very minority of teachers that, you know, might abuse children compared to the majority that don't. So what's interesting is that they choose to publish this article when um, a hundred percent of the country is experiencing some form of homeschooling, if that's what you want to call it. Um, I think it's more pandemic schooling, which is a little different than homeschooling because we know homeschooling truly takes um, preparation. It's not something you're just usually um, thrown into, into on the spot. So the author, her name is Erin O'Donnell. And so what I think is interesting is I didn't look at the image at first um, when I was first reading the article, but the image here <laughs> just kills me. Here shows all these kids at obviously Tim Public School and they're happy and they're outside and they're just enjoying themselves while you've got the poor little homeschooler that's just trapped inside and they're being taught uh, reading, writing, arithmetic, and the Bible. Oh my goodness. And look, they have little bars on their windows to prevent them from getting out. If th that's not the most ironic thing I've ever seen because the public school system is a better example of being locked up with um, all these required things that you are to know. And they only get their outdoor, outdoor time 20 minutes a day, whereas most homeschoolers are outdoor a huge chunk of the day, especially when the weather is nice. So it says more people are choosing to homeschool. So this is a concern to the elites that more people are getting out of the controlled education system. And you know, you know, you look at the history of compulsory education and the elite, elites have always been in charge of that. And Thomas Sowell wrote a great book talking about um, essentially your, your elites. Um, getting to be in control of everything. Um, so she talks a lot about this person, Elizabeth um, Bartholet, that is a public interest law professor and most of her experience is working in children advocacy and a lot of it has to do with um, kids in foster care and the adoption system. And this particular person wants a presumptive ban on homeschooling. So it's, it's like she wants to say you are guilty until you are proven innocent, which you would think as a law professor, it's about being innocent until proven guilty. But we kind of tend not to have that mindset. Um, and she even wrote stuff about the Me Too movement, which I'm not denying any of those cases because I do believe the vast majority to be true. But there's still a bit of, it's it's always been about Proving guilt, but we, we turn it into our society's created something into proving innocence, and that's incredibly messed up. So, like I said, this lady's experience has been with um, 
child abuse and also promoting a democratic society. Now, democratic is the idea that it's kind of the people in charge and the collective in, in the majority. Um, it talks about how it's essentially unregulated um, and that really does vary by state. Um, Pennsylvania and Washington definitely have um, quite a bit of regulations. And she kind of goes on to say, but there are a dozen states that the level of education of the parents doesn't even matter, that people who've never gone to school could homeschool their kids, people who can't do all this stuff should be homeschooling their kids. And they're not required to register their children as even homeschoolers, um, keep them at home. Well, yeah, because it's none of your business. It's, it's no one's business what I do with my children. She says the practice can isolate children and the benefit of sitting school is that they, at age four or five, the teachers are mandated reporters. Yes, teachers are mandated reporters. But here's the thing is teachers are not going to report on each other because they don't. And teachers do report when they see things. And that doesn't mean anything gets done about it. I have known teachers that reported suspected cases. And guess what? Those kids were not removed. There was one instance where at a place that I worked that they said, well, even though this kid had belt marks on his body, they said, well, you know, part of their culture, that's just what they do. So we can't really, you know, do anything about that other than tell them not to do that. This kid had belt marks on his body. I wasn't the teacher involved in that situation, but I was very aware of it. Um, so just because a kid goes to public school does not mean they're being protected from abusive homes because abusive homes can cover it just as well. And the vast majority of kids that are abused go to public school. Okay. And I don't think most people that abuse their kids think I'm going to homeschool them so I can keep abusing them because I think a lot of abusers don't even realize that they are abusive but justified in their, in their beliefs. Um, even when she mentioned Tara Westover's case in Educated, which I read that book and really recommend, okay, that dad obviously had a mental illness and is, like I said, one of those extreme situations, and that what makes her story compelling is all those extreme situations that happen. Um, the person notes that they're choosing them for a array of reasons to protect their kids from bullying, true, flexibility, um, so surveys show homeschoolers a majority of families estimated up to 90% are driven by their conservative Christian beliefs and seek to remove their children from mainstream culture. She notes that some of these parents are extreme religious ideologues who question science to promote female surrender. Okay, yeah, there are some extreme conservative Christian families out there. I'm not denying this. They don't exist. I have not met any. Um, the absence of regulations ensure that homeschooled children are receiving a meaningful, meaningful equivalent required by public schools. We all know that the public schools are giving a mediocre education to most children. I saw it. I was a part of it. It was very mediocre, and that's why I didn't want that for my children. Um, this quote was interesting. It says, from the beginning of compulsory education in this country, I thought of the government as having some right to educate children so that they became active productive participants in a larger society. Compulsory education started because they wanted workers to work in the factories during the Industrial Revolution. Yes, it was about making productive citizens, citizens that will work on the product lines, creating products for you to buy, creating more workers that are dependent on factories for the things that they need instead of creating self-sufficiency. Um, it was, yeah, it was about getting jobs. That was pretty simple. And then she also says, but it's also important that children grow up exposed to community values, social values, democratic values, ideas about non-discrimination and tolerance of other people's viewpoints. In other words, they only want the viewpoint held in public schools, not the family viewpoints. 
that sounds that doesn't sound like non-discrimination to me that sounds like discrimination that you're wanting a single viewpoint and she even talks about how european countries and germany ban homeschooling okay well why does germany have homeschooling banned well because hitler knew very well that in order to indoctrinate the masses to support his ideology was to have them in school. If they were at home, he could not guarantee them to believe the Nazi propaganda that he wanted them to do. There's some quote about him saying, if we you know, can control the textbooks, we can control the youth or something like that. Yeah, and in a lot of Eastern Europe, because those were communist countries and communist are very specific about not wanting people to think differently than what the party tells them. Read Animal Farm or 1984 that are works of fiction and it tells you exactly how communists want them to be. They don't want you to be independent thinkers regardless. And they're very, communists are very anti-religion. They will discourage religion and in fact sometimes promote straight up atheism, which in itself is an ideological belief system. It just puts the state as the god in charge and not a um, spirit being that a Christian believes in or some other religious person believing whatever they do. Um, says they need to restrict the practice and then they of course represent the homeschool legal defense association um, says they work to dismantle many states regulations um, and they have no organized political opposition. So they're, so that tells you that the homes, this one small organization compared to a lot of organizations in the whole, have a lot of power for being one organization. Whereas when you think of like some things like, you know, take um, abortion organizations, there are several out there that are very powerful and have way more funding than a Christian conservative homeschooling group, especially when homeschooling still makes up a small minority of the population. It says parents should have very significant rights to raise their children to beliefs and religions that they hold, but requiring them to attend schools outside the home for six or seven hours a day, she argues, does not unduly limit parents' influence on children's views and ideas. So once again, they don't want the parents being the sole influencers on society. They want control because they know that they can have ultimate and more control than the parent. Okay? And this this quote killed me right here. The issue is, do we think that parents should have 24-7 essential authoritarian control over their children from age 0 to 18 years? Absolutely. freaking lutely She says she thinks this is dangerous to put powerful people in charge of the powerless and give them powerful ones total authority. What do you think government schools is? It is about putting powerful people. Okay? You've got teachers. You've got administrators. You've got bureaucrats, politicians having complete control over children. They remove them from the homes and put them in their control. Um, I mean, she says she does mention that some cases homeschooling can be justified um, and that some motivations may be good, but says parents should basically have permission to opt out of schools and that the burden of proving their case is justified should fall on the parents. Once again, that is some jacked up backwards thought process. I mean, th this is like probably like eugenist type thinking that I'm sure if she had her way and I haven't read some of her reproductive stuff that she mentions in, in other child advocacy, but I would I would almost assume she would be the type of person that if a law could be passed proving that you had to prove that you um, can be a sufficient parent before you could even um, conceive and have children to begin with. I mean, like I said, this, this, this woman has borderline eugenist type thinking. Um, and, I, and I imagine with, with probably what I could guess from her is that she's probably um, pro-choice believing that women should have complete autonomy and control over their body and whether they want to be a mom or not. But what kills me is sometimes, um, even though I, I believe pro-choice position is, is generally about abortion and the right to choose abortion or not, 
and that's fine if they want to, you know, hold that view. But when they use arguments like it's bodily autonomy and things like that, and well, the woman should get to make the decision. Well, why can't the woman make the same decision on how she wants to raise her children? That's what doesn't make sense to me from people like this. It's kind of slightly contradictory from my point of view and and that's like kind of a whole nother debate in it in itself so anyway th this kind of actually motivates me to want to go ahead and start um supporting uh hsl da which i have not yet at this time but and, and partly that's because i live in, in a fairly free um unregulated state that sees that the family unit is the primary unit in control of, um, of children. So leave me a comment and tell me what you think.